Poštovani gledalci, um, ovih dana se u svjetskim medijima ponovno pojavljuje još jedna velika istraga istraživačkog novinarstva o onome što se dešava iza scene. Vidjeli smo nekoliko takvih istraga u prošlosti, uključujući Panama Papers i još neke. Sada se pojavlje nova koja se naziva Pegasus Project. Šta je Pegasus Project? To je istraga o onome kako su određene vlade koristile tehnologiju iz Izraela kako bi špionirali ne samo svoje političke protivnike, ne samo aktiviste u društvu, nego i novinare. Jedan od takvih novinara je mađarski novinar Sabol Španji koji je bio meta istraživanja, odnosno špioniranja mađarske vlade. Upravo sa Panjem razgovaram o tome šta se dešavalo kada je u pitanju ova istraga i šta se dešavalo njemu kada je u pitanju mađarska vlada, ali isto tako razgovaramo i o generalnoj situaciji. Sabo Španji, welcome to program N1. Thank you for having me. I just said that um, the Pegasus project is the project which is discussing and discovering the details of uh, such a horrendous crime, if I may say, of uh, spying of journalists, politicians, activists, and everybody else. About 180 people we know um, up to this moment um, that they were um, targeted uh, because of their work in several countries, but you're the one of journalists um, whose name uh, popped up um, in Hungary. Can you tell to our viewers what was happening and why you were targeted by Viktor Orban government? Yes, uh, so thank you for having me uh, on your show. Uh, 50,000 uh, leaked phone numbers um, were obtained by this consortium of journalists. And these are uh, phone numbers that clients client countries, because only governments can use the Pegasus spyware, client countries of Israel's NSO, um, uh, cybersecurity company, um, uh, used to type in to some kind of database to target uh, those they wanted to surveil. And among those 50,000 uh, numbers, uh, we identified uh, almost 200 journalists. And unfortunately, I was, I was among them. So I'm mostly uh, covering uh, diplomacy, foreign policy, and corruption and national security related stories in Hungary. I'm an investigative journalist. So I usually have confidential sources uh, who leak uh, uh, government documents to me or, or, or give me uh, sensitive information about how the government is, uh, is conducting its foreign policy with, uh, with China, with Russia, with um, the, the United States. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's okay that's okay just continue yeah and um it seems that uh, i was working on such interesting topics that uh, some agency in hungary tried to 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 surveil me uh, a forensic analysis of my phone shows that uh, i was surveilled for more than uh, seven months the Interesting element here is, um, Sabos, that um, you were investigating practically yourself and you were practically investigating your own spying and your own investigation, uh, which government um, took. Um, I know that your colleagues are also um, targeted. How you felt when you learned that your own government is spying on you? I mean, uh, this is always this is always very uh, very sad to hear that we got to this situation that I'm as a Hungarian citizen, I am I am surveilled by by my own state. Uh, it's 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 a personal thing, but I'm also of Jewish origin, and and the fact that it was Israel that was assisting my surveillance in Hungary, I mean, it it all it it, it only makes it even even worse. Uh, this tool, Pegasus, is meant to be used against uh, terrorists and very serious criminals. I don't consider myself any of those. I'm a very, you know, very basic, normal guy uh, who happens to be a journalist. Uh, so it's, it's infuriating and it, it outrages me that, uh, that I was selected as target for, for this surveillance. We heard that some um, businessmen and uh, people from, from um, media business in Hungary were targeted, but not only them, but also their friends and then fa their family members. 
have you discovered um, anything related to your family except your phones that it was um, target of this uh, spying? To be to be honest, when I got access to this database, the very first thing was that I you know you know I typed in the numbers of of my own family, my my mother, my my father, uh, my 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 girlfriend at the time, and 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 unfortunately they were not in this database. Um, the thing what we know about Pegasus is this is really expensive. So to target like a single person, it costs uh, uh, multiple tens of thousands of dollars. So you cannot you know, use it against too many people because it's just a lot of money. Um, and we see, as you mentioned, we have two media company owners who were targets uh, according to this database. In one case, uh, his name is Zoltan Varga. He's the owner of Hungary's largest independent uh, uh, news company. And he had a meeting with his friends, seven of them in total. And we see uh, each, uh, each of their phone number uh, in this database. And at least in one case, we know that the phone of one of his friends was indeed hacked and they had a dinner and through that phone, uh, whoever conducted this surveillance could have uh, could have uh, recorded the whole conversation. The other case is with, uh, with a former oligarch who was an enemy of Viktor Orban at that time, who also owned the media empire. He didn't use a smartphone, so that's why we don't see his his number because Pegasus is you know useless against uh, against old phones. But his uh, his his own son and and also his private lawyer uh, pops up. Uh, among the numbers. Uh, before I ask you about other countries, let's say uh, with Hungary, we know that in the recent years, um, journalists have a lot of problems in Hungary, that the media freedoms are curtailed very much um, in, your, in your country. And um, just recently, Reporters Without Borders added your prime minister as one of uh, pariahs when it comes to the media. Freedoms, and we know that some journalists just walked away from um, from from um, their offices um, in, let's say, outbursts of anger what, with what was happening to them. So, what is the media situation today in in um, in your country? We have very few independent uh, media companies left, and, and they are all, almost all of them are under government pressure. The government is pressuring them, the owners, to sell these outlets to government friendly businessmen. And, and from time to time, there are smear campaigns uh, against individual journalists uh, like myself or, or my colleagues. So this is the, something we've been facing for, for, for years now. Still, Hungary is an EU country, so we cannot be put into jail or, or tortured or what happens to journalists in Turkey or, or Morocco or Mexico. Uh, but, but the situation is, is, is not as it should be in an EU state. Uh, Sabos, uh, when we speak about that, are you afraid that despite the fact that you're EU country and that you are EU citizens, that the government might try to do something to do the harm either to you or to your um, colleagues or, or will everything will stay in the situation of uh, spying? I don't know. I, I really cannot answer that. I really hope that, that they won't. But, you know, after this, who knows what can happen? Yeah, we saw that we saw that with some um, journalists um, in um, countries um, here, but also uh, from your perspective, because you're living under one one such regime. Um, for example, in Slovenia, the other country which is a part of the European Union, we see the prime minister who calls our colleagues journalists um, whores, criminals, prostitutes, and all kinds of um, names. Should we be afraid that that uh, wave of um, anti-journalism um, rhetorics and moves by the governments will spread around, especially in the countries of a V4 um, group, which is very close to um, your prime minister, but also some countries here in the region of Western Balkans? Yes, I'm afraid that you know this is like a disease that that will spread, and we already see that uh, that businessmen in Viktor Orban's close circles are buying media outlets in Slovenia, in Croatia, in North Macedonia, 
uh, in Romania. Uh, so are basically so they are basically trying to spread, you know, on one hand, Hungary's regional influence uh, in these countries, but also all the methods and 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 all the tools that they are they are already using in Hungary. Viktor Orban is mostly supporting local right-wing nationalist populist parties in these countries. So it seems that that businessmen in his close circle are helping out these parties with these media acquisitions. So I, I would I would I would suggest that you know these acquisitions, if, if it happens in your country, should be scrutinized, not just because of you know foreign influence, which in itself may be a problem, but also because it might lead to this deteriorating media situation we already see in Hungary. Do you think that the European Union can do something and pressure Viktor Orban to stop these attacks on the media or everything will um, stay just on awards and bickering between Budapest and Brussels? I mean, Hungary has been an EU member state uh, since, uh, since the mid 2000s. Uh, Orban has been in power since 2010. Uh, all that happened to Hungary's free media and all that happened to Hungary's journalists happened uh, at the EU's oversight. So they were clearly seeing what's happening here. They did very little in practice that, uh, that could have prevented this from happening. I don't know if they're not interested or they just don't have the power, uh, but, but I don't see the EU as a, as a game changer uh, on this issue. Many are saying um, in the media that the um, mayor of uh, Budapest could be the leader of the opposition on the next parliamentary elections and that he might try or could defeat Viktor Orban on the next election. Is it possible that the opposition will be strong enough to get rid of him and to change the political situation in Hungary? Um, you know, I, I really don't know. Uh, what we see is that the first time Hungary's opposition is not fragmented but united and they will put forward a joint candidate for for prime minister uh, so structurally they are in a better position uh, I, I don't know what their chances are what we see is that the Hungarian government controls most of the media they control uh, all the uh, independent institutions in the country so the playing field is very uneven it's very hard to uh, to to beat to defeat in a in a in an election our our governing party. And let's move for a bit to the other um, part of this Pegasus story. You have said that the two hundred journalists were targeted um, in um, this um, spying ring, and I saw that in a Guardian report that also the wife. Um, and the fiancé of uh, slain the journalist Jamal Khashoggi were uh, targeted. And we heard about the Financial Times editor was also um, targeted. What that tells you about the media freedom today on a global level? And should we be afraid that this is just the beginning of um, different kind of action against journalists? Uh, I, I think this is the beginning. This is the first time and uh, that we see these kinds of tools uh, used uh, against journalists and mass. So this is a massive scale of surveillance. And with the, with the development of new technologies, I think we're heading into a direction where this problem will be more and more widespread. Probably journalists, you know, they are just the, 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 the rats in the laboratory were the first ones. Uh, who, who, who are now put in the crosshairs, but all, all the rest of the groups that belong to civil society, uh, uh, lawyers, human rights activists, opposition politicians, we also see these people targeted with Pegasus. And I believe that in the future, we will see, if not this tool, but, but other cyber weapons used against uh, civil society. I'm certainly afraid that we're entering a very dark age where this, this, these methods will be more widespread. How many countries were uh, targeted in this um, investigation and how many um, of them you discovered that they were um, basically using the Pegasus uh, um, software to uh, spy? Mm. So the Pegasus software is, is used by uh, around 36 countries, I think around the world. And we have identified more, more than 10 countries where we see very direct evidence of abusing Pegasus. 
So in the rest of the countries, we uh, or, or yet we we haven't published uh, stories on on similar abuses. But there are ten countries ranging from Mexico, India, um, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, uh, Togo, Rwanda, where the the those in power, the government or state institutions, clearly not only use this tool against uh, suspected terrorists or pedophiles or, or, or uh, drug dealers, but also against the opposition, uh, against journalists or, or against human rights lawyers. Yeah, and when we, when we see the investigations like this, the government usually would say, oh, you were um, doing a crime or, or you're um, looking where you shouldn't be uh, looking. And these investigations usually coming as leaks and informations which are basically coming from um, whistleblowers. Should we do more to protect the people like this when they're going with the information of public interest out and warning you and your colleagues and others who were targets of these investigations? Absolutely. I think it's very crucial that, that we try to protect those people uh, who are brave enough that if, we, if, they, uh, if they are witnesses of abuses of power, if they, if they possess documents that can prove corruption, that they can safely uh, give these evidences to journalists. It's, it's crucial that we protect them. And that's why I think in the future we have to, as journalists, conduct our meetings in person. We have to rely less on, on encrypted uh, applications like Signal or WhatsApp because clearly these are not safe. Uh, so yeah, we, we need to take additional security measures to, to protect these people. But um, what about our own security? How we can increase our own security? And is there um, international body which could do more to protect us except our own journalistic institutions who are trying or organizations who are trying to do something to protect um, journalists? Yes, the, there are already voices calling for uh, regulation of these spywares to, to prevent these companies of selling these equipments to authoritarian countries, to dictatorships where human rights uh, are being infringed where opposition people are put into uh, uh, jail and stuff. So there needs to be some kind of regulation um, because otherwise I, I don't really see how we can individually uh, defend ourselves against uh, such, such technologies. Will this discourage you to um, do what you were doing up to this moment in journalism or will this give you more strength and more empowerment to do um, things which you were doing? I'm, I'm more motivated than ever to, to, to carry out my, my job. Uh, you know, this is a badge of honor. The gov my, my, my government seems to think that I'm interesting enough to, to spend tens of thousands of dollars and this cyber uh, 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 weapon on me because the, the work I'm doing is so interesting to them. So I guess my, my duty is to, to carry on and, and do my work as an investigative journalist. Sabo Spanien, thank you so very much for this interview. Thank you very much for having me here. Poštovani gledalci, bio ovo intervju sa Sabo Spanien. Razgovarali smo o špioniranju novinara u Mađarskoj, ali i širom svijeta. Ostanite uz program N1. Doviđenje.